Hey, it's Wendy again from Worldwide Speak. And in this video, I'm going to talk about um, the point by point method for the comparison and contrast essay. And it's just going to be an overview of what the structure looks like. So if you're new to writing in English and now you need to write a comparison and contrast essay and you're interested in the point by point method, then this is the video for you to watch so you can get a great understanding of what that structure looks like specifically. Okay, let's learn. All right, in the other video I did on um, the comparison and contrast essay for the block method, I showed this same slide, and it just shows you the difference between the two ways to write this type of essay. The block method has the two body paragraphs and each paragraph only focuses on one thing. For example, in this one, you know, body paragraph would body paragraph one would focus on the orange and body paragraph two would focus on the apple and that's for the block method. Well, the point by point is what I'm going to talk to you about today and that's a bit different than the block method. The point by point method talks about both things you're comparing in each paragraph and there are going to be more paragraphs. It won't just be two like the block method. So in paragraph one, we're going to talk about um, one point of comparison and we'll talk about the orange and the apple. And then in paragraph two, we'll focus on a different point of comparison. Again, we'll talk about both the orange and the apple and so on. So as I stated before in the other video, the block method's great to start out with. It's a, maybe a little bit easier. Um, and the point by point method can go into more detail and maybe a little more interesting for the reader. Now, remember, that is totally my opinion. But so here you see again the two methods side by side. Let's move forward and focus on this point by point method and so that we can really understand the structure and what it looks like. So the point by point method. In this method, the writer talks about one point of comparison between the two subjects in each paragraph, just like I stated before in the previous slide. So what does this look like? The structure when, what does the structure look like when you begin writing? There's the introduction paragraph. Then you have a body paragraph with your point of comparison one. You have another body paragraph with another point of comparison. And then possibly another body paragraph with another point of comparison. And lastly, you have your conclusion paragraph. So you're going to be comparing, like in our example and today, we're going to be comparing oranges and apples. So you're going to find three things three points of comparison, and you're going to focus on each point in each body paragraph, and you're going to mention the orange and the apple in each body paragraph. Okay, let's talk about the introduction paragraph. The first sentence you're going to need is some sort of hook, and that just means it's an interesting sentence that grabs your reader's attention right away and says, hey, you're going to want to read this essay because it's super interesting. Then you're going to need to give some background information about the two subjects so your reader understands that there are two things involved in this paper. And lastly, you're going to need a super strong thesis statement. And in order to write one of those, you're going to have to include um, the points of comparison between the two subjects and then you also need to let the reader know if you're talking about similarities, differences, or both. Let's take a moment to look at what a strong thesis would look like for a comparison and contrast essay point by point method. Uh, I've done an example thesis for similarities, differences, and both to give you a better idea. 
So let's say we were going to talk about similarities. You can see um, the sentence there is the thesis sentence for that. And it says both oranges and apples are a specific type of food grown in similar places and provide many important nutrients for humans. I've mentioned three points of comparisons. So it's that they're a type of food, they grow in similar places, and they provide important nutrients. So each of my body paragraphs is going to focus on one specific point of comparison that's mentioned in the thesis, and I'll go specifically in that order as well. Now let's say we wanted to talk about differences. Our thesis would look something like this. Compared to oranges, Apples originated in a different area of the world, grow in cooler climates, and differ greatly in appearance. So I've let my reader know the three points of comparison are different area of the world, where they originated, where they grow in cooler climates, and that they look different, their appearance is different. And the reader knows I'm focusing on differences, right? So I've used the word different area of the world and differ greatly to remind them of that. So our thesis is very focused. We've mentioned the three points of comparison and we've used the correct language to show differences. Now, lastly, let's take a look at what a thesis statement would look like if you were going to do both similarities and differences. Even though oranges and apples are different in where they're grown and where they originated, they both are similar in how people use them. Three points of comparison. Two of those are showing differences and one of those is showing similarities. You can do both. Um, and I made sure to use the correct language to inform the reader that uh, when I used even though, um, setting up a contrast, right, and I show that there, I use the word different um, to indicate a difference. And then I, the second part of the sentence, I say they both are similar. I use the word both and the word similar to signal to the reader I'm going to focus on similarities for this point. So there you have it a thesis statement for similarities, for differences, and for both. Okay, I'd like to go over specifically what would be inside the body paragraph uh, for a point-by-point -point method essay. So let's just say I'm going to focus on differences. And remember those thesis statements I showed you previously? I'm just using the same one that I did for differences. So let's say our main focus of our essay is um, com on differences, and here's our thesis. Compared to oranges, apples originated in a different area of the world, grow in cooler climates, and differ greatly in appearance. So my three body paragraphs, what are those going to look like? Well, body paragraph number one, point of comparison number one, is going to be where they originated. Do you see how I mentioned that first in my thesis? It has to be the first body paragraph so that there's no confusion and that the, it's very, it flows nicely when the reader's reading it. Now, you mentioned the orange first and then you mentioned the apple. Remember here in our thesis, um, we mentioned our orange first and then our apple. We have to be really careful with order in the comparison and contrast essay. Now, what do you think body paragraph number two is going to be about? Well, yeah, you're right. It's about the climate because that's the second thing I mentioned in my thesis. And again, I'm going to talk about the orange first. And then I'm going to talk about the apple in comparison to the orange. And lastly, I'm sure you know exactly the answer to this. It's going to be about their appearance because it's the last thing that I mentioned in uh, my thesis statement. 
And like the other body paragraphs, we talk about the orange first, then we talk about the apple in comparison to the orange. So you can see here, there's a nice flow and order to your essay, as long as you keep things consistent. Remember, in your thesis, the first thing you talk about is going to be your first body paragraph, and then you need to keep your two subjects in order. If you talk about oranges first, you have to talk about oranges first in each body paragraph. Okay, so I thought it would help you if I actually wrote out one of these paragraphs so you could see what it looks like in real life. And remember, our thesis um, is the one for differences. And this would be the first body paragraph for this essay. Now, this is a very, very basic body paragraph, but in, also you probably would never write about apples and oranges. But for this example, it's nice to see because it's very clear. So if we look at the first point of comparison, it's where they originated. The second point of comparison is cooler climates. And the third one is appearance. Now, you might want to pause the video here for a second and read the body paragraph so that you have a better understanding of what I'm about to say next. Okay, great. So, you can see the first sentence that I write in this body paragraph talks about place of origin. So, we know the topic of this body paragraph is about the place of origin. And I talk first about the oranges, and then I talk about the apples. And then when I'm talking about the apple, you can see that I reference back to the orange. And I do that by saying, and I use the transition word in contrast, which is also um, a great one to use when you're writing about differences. Signals to the reader, oh, they're gonna show me a difference. And I say, in contrast, unlike the orange, so I'm telling the reader, hey, I know I just talked about the orange, and I'm gonna tell you something about the apple that's different than this orange. I said the apple comes from Central Asia. So you can see here in this very basic paragraph that I mention the first point of comparison in my topic sentence and I show that there are differences and then I mention the orange first and then I mention the apple in comparison to the orange and I make sure to use the correct language um, like if I'm talking about differences, I use different or differ, and then I also use a transition word to show the reader that difference. And lastly, the conclusion paragraph. How do we write this? Well, we restate our thesis, and we, that's, we tell the reader that we focused on similarities or differences or both. We just remind them of that. And then our next sentence can talk about the points of comparison again. Remember in ours, the three points of comparison were where they originated, um, the climate they grow in, and their appearance. And then we can give, for a final sentence, some sort of opinion or realization that we had after we analyzed and compared or contrasted these two subjects. I'd like to give you an example of a conclusion uh, so you have a better idea of what this looks like. So again, you might wanna pause the video here for a second and read this short paragraph so you have a better idea of what I'm talking about as I go through each sentence. Okay, thanks for taking the time to read that. So remember I said the first thing you need is to restate your thesis. Well, here, I did that here, and I made sure to use that transition to conclude, to signal to our reader, hey, this essay is finishing. It makes it flow really smoothly. 
and I said oranges and apples have many differing qualities. I just use a little bit different language and just to remind the reader that I was talking about differences. And then I mentioned that you can restate or talk about the points of comparison again. I wrote, clearly this can be seen when the place of origin, growing climate, and appearance are all taken into consideration. I just touch upon each point of comparison in the second sentence. And lastly, I'm going to have some opinion or realization about these two things. And I wrote, while both of these are often lumped together, rightly so, as fruit, it's important to realize that these small but significant differences make oranges and apples truly unique and definitely fascinating to study as well as eat. So there you have it, a short, clear, effective conclusion paragraph. It's very basic, but it's really useful for you when you're learning how to write in English to see what this structure looks like and the type of language that we're using. Okay, there are some things I'd like you to remember and that's number one, watch your order. Remember when I talked about in the point by point method in the thesis, you have your points of comparison. Well, you need to make sure those body paragraphs match up to those points of comparison. If you mention something first, it's got to be the first body paragraph. Also, within your paragraph, you've got to keep the order of the two subjects. If you talk about one thing first in the first body paragraph, then you have to talk about it first in the second, third, fourth, however many body paragraphs. For us, it was oranges and apples, and we always talked about the orange first, and then we talked about the apple. Um, you need to use the appropriate um, comparison transition words. I have a video on this. It's great to watch that so you can understand how we use these transition words with comparison and contrast essays, and I give plenty of examples. Lastly, let's just review that structure of the point-by-point -point method for a comparison contrast essay again. So we have our introduction paragraph, we have body paragraph one with the point of comparison one, and we make sure to follow the correct order. And for us, it was oranges and apples. And our point of comparison was origin. Then we have body paragraph number two, and it's the second point of comparison. And we mention the first thing, and then the second thing in the same order as we did in the first body paragraph. For us, it was where they grew, or where they grow, then we have body paragraph number three. Again, we keep the same order. And for us, it was appearance, what they looked like. And then you have your conclusion paragraph. So that's it. You just need to really watch your order and use the correct transitions. And you are going to write a clear and effective comparison contrast essay. You can do this. As always, thank you so much for learning with us. We truly appreciate having you here. And if you enjoy this content, consider subscribing. And when you subscribe, remember to turn on your notifications. All right, take care.